We've talked about optimization, both with single and multivariable functions. The process is very similar for both, although with the multivariable problems we did introduce this idea of having constraints applied to our function. But now we want to shift gears into sort of a related topic, but a little bit different in terms of application. And that's the idea of diminishing returns. So recall that when we talk about the first derivative, that tells us about the rate of change of our function. The second derivative tells us about the rate of change of the rate of change, or the rate of change of our derivative function, f prime. So that is the rate of change of the rate of change of our function. That can be a confusing idea when we first introduce it, but essentially what we want to do with this idea of diminishing returns is understand when the rate of change of our function begins to slow down. So when we talked about optimization, uh, for the single variable case, we were looking for when our function changed from increasing to decreasing. So our rate of change would shift from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. That would give us a maximum or minimum. When we talk about this idea of diminishing returns, what we want to do is consider a curve and identify when that rate of change starts to slow down. So in this case, what we would have occurring is for this particular graph at x equals 8, a point of diminishing returns occurring where our function is increasing over this entire interval. But if we look at the first part of this interval, we have much more rapid growth. So that rate of increase is much higher. We hit this point and our function is still increasing, but at a slower rate. So that rate of return, uh, I'm sorry, that rate of growth of our function starts to slow a little bit. If we were to calculate this by hand, what we would be looking for is to construct a sign chart for the second derivative of our function. At this point of diminishing returns, we would end up with a point where our second derivative is equal to zero, and we would see our graph change, or our second derivative change from positive values to negative values. So again, it doesn't mean that our function is changing to decreasing. It just means that our function is growing at a slower rate. So when we find this point of diminishing returns, really what we're doing is finding an inflection point. So a point where our second derivative changes from positive to negative. And now we're applying some context or some application to it. So for all values of x up to that inflection point, we're seeing more rapid growth. We hit that point of inflection, and we still have an increasing function, but we see slower growth. So it's very important to keep in mind this idea that the point of diminishing returns does not mean that our function starts to decrease. The point of diminishing returns occurs at an inflection point where the second derivative changes from positive to negative. So if we were to look back at this graph again and apply, say, the context of sales per month, sales per day, what we would see is over the first several months, a rapid increase in our number of sales each month. Then after some point, say after eight months, sales are continuing to increase, but again at a slower rate than before. So we're still selling more units each month or each day, whatever we're counting in terms of. However, that rate of increase has just slowed down. 
So to apply this, in example 10, we have a company that introduces a new computer game in a city using television adver advertisements. Survey shows that P% percent of the target audience buy the game after X ads are broadcast, satisfying the equation below. We want to find the inflection point of the given function and identify when the rate of sales start to taper off. So in order to do that, we could switch to Wolfram Alpha and ask for an inflection point for 100 divided by this longer expression, all in parentheses. Since this is a more complicated function, it's always a good idea to just double check that input. But what we see is we get an inflection point at x equals 32.6, or about 33. And that our function evaluated at that, at that point would be 50. So we have an x value of about 33 and a function value of 50 at that point. So our inflection point at occur, occurs at approximately x equals 33, which tells us that the point of diminishing returns occurs after 33 ads have been run. And at that point, about 50% of the target audience, since that was the result for our function evaluated at about x equals 33, about 50% of the target audience has bought the game. So again, in terms of application, this would tell a business that after 33 ads have been run, after about 50% of customers, the target audience has bought the game, the game will still continue to sell, but at a slower rate than before. So it's between the through that window of the first 33 ads where they're seeing the most rapid return on that advertising investment. Similarly, in example 11, we could find the point of diminishing returns for this given function. So we could find, ask uh, Wolfram Alpha to find that inflection point for 11,000 minus x cubed plus 45x squared plus 700x. We would generate an inflection point at x equals 15, and the value of our function at x equals 15 would be 28,250. However, in the example we're given, we're told that the equation below gives us revenue in thousands of dollars, and x is the amount spent on advertising in thousands of dollars. So that value of x equals 15 would tell us that our point of diminishing returns occurs after $15,000 has been spent on advertising, generating a revenue of $28,250,000. So again, up to from zero to fifteen thousand dollars in advertising, that company would be seeing the largest return on their investment in advertising. They would see the most rapid growth in their revenue. That point of diminishing returns would occur after fifteen thousand dollars had been spent, and at that point, they would have generated a little over twenty-eight million dollars in revenue. After that point, revenue will continue to increase, just not as quickly. They won't see as much return on the investment of those advertising dollars. In our last example, we have a company that estimates that it will sell in units of a product after spending X thousand dollars on advertising, given by this function. So again, we can look for an inflection point for that function. And we end up with results of x equals 10 and x equals 36. If we refer back to the problem, though, we are given a specific domain for this problem. x is between 24 and 25, which actually means that both of our solutions would be incorrect because it looks like I've got a little bit of a typo here. 
that domain should be 24 to 45, meaning the solution Wolfram Alpha gave us, uh, or those solutions of 36 and 10, we would only want the solution x equals 36, which would tell us that after X thousand dollars have been spent on advertising, so after $36,000 have been spent on advertising, and 28,344 units have been sold, this company would have reached that point of diminishing returns.